Hi, I'm Rick, Rick Krause, and this is my wife Sandy. Welcome to our wildlife sanctuary. Uh, we've been at it for, for quite some time. We really thoroughly love it here. Well, we started off being birders down in coastal Georgia and uh, joined the Audubon Society down there, coastal Audubon, and moved up here in 1972 and, and stayed with Audubon, and birding was our love. We realized that uh, birding uh, had a lot to do with, uh, with the surroundings, with the, uh, the native habitat in, in this case, and, and such as that. So we began being interested in, in the botany of, of things, and uh, then we became interested in uh, native plants and contrasting that with uh, invasive plants. So the property here is in suburbia, and it should be a turf grass with boxwoods and crepe myrtles and maybe uh, nandina. We don't have any of that. Uh, we did to begin with. We made uh, quite a few mistakes early on. We did start with uh, grass and then uh, liriope and such as that. So we were flying blind, uh, taking wrong roads, taking wrong paths in, in a lot of our endeavors, uh, planting things that uh, we shouldn't have, uh, removing them after they got uh, difficult to remove. But we, we have, and today, uh, we're pleased um, that we have mostly native plants, mostly native to the, the Piedmont. Uh, they are rather hard to come by in the, in the typical, I guess, box store nurseries is what I understand. I don't shop there for that. Um, I guess probably most of the native plants that we have uh, came through rescues and we have been uh, doing uh, rescues through the, uh, the Georgia Native Plant Society probably over 10 years, and we've gotten a lot of plants uh, by way of, of the rescues. Um, we will buy plants from uh, the, the Georgia Native Plant Society. Uh, Georgia Perimeter College uh, is a good source. Uh, another uh, source of a lot of the plants that we have are volunteers. Uh, I believe our seed box that I'm looking at here, um, the box elder behind you, and uh, Suvac, and uh, really probably the bone set and the uh, the camphor weed were all uh, volunteers. Uh, you know, where they came from, of course, I have no idea, but there are a lot that have come in that way that uh, we make a judgment, of course, as to whether we want to keep them or yank them out, but uh, we have kept a lot. Okay, this is the, uh, the tall boat set, the uh, Eupatorium autissimum. Um, most people, of course, treat it as a weed. Uh, they see it in the, the Georgia Power right of way and say, oh my God, look at that stuff growing all over the place, almost like that ragweed, which of course is probably solidago. But this, uh, this plant uh, popped up in our yard about three years ago and we were just astounded at the variety of, of insects. And I, I said uh, flying insects, but I'm watching ants too all over this and there's just a plethora of, of uh, of pollinators on this plant. It's the most prolific in, in those terms of all of our plants. We've got ironweed, we've got joe pie weed, we've got solidago, but this puts them all to shame. And I will say this, the other night we uh, turned on our garage security light, we never use it, maybe once every five years, and came out and realized there were moths all over it. And so the light went out and we looked very closely and they were just moths of all variety crawling all over this plant doing the same thing at dark that these insects are doing today. Astounding. My thinking about insects have changed quite a bit over the years. Um, I, you know, probably as a, as a kid I, I thought that insects would either bite or sting. And that's just not the way things are. Um, I'll be putting my face into that uh, boat head over there and there's wasps all around, carpenter bees, there's uh, bumblebees, small bees, flies, and just every type of insect you might think of, and you know, they, they're not going to be interested in me. They're interested in what they're doing right then at that spot and pollinating. As I mentioned, we don't use any uh, insecticides at all. Um, I believe that if somebody has 
uh, mosquito control, they, they, they end up with bug control, insect control, insect uh, killing. Uh, and, and of course there couldn't be anything worse than uh, that for, um, for, for trying to, to support uh, bird life or any critter life uh, in your uh, property. So I, we feel very strongly about that. The backyard is truly a sanctuary and we do have a lot of, of nesting critters here, nesting birds. Of course we started with uh, the classic, the bluebird, and put the bluebird boxes up and they're visited uh, pretty much annually, sometimes two broods per year. Uh, we'll have a, a house wren come in and want one of those boxes and sometimes they'll, they'll get it. Carolina wren nests here all the time, eastern phoebe nests. Uh, We've got a hackberry in the front yard that uh, hosted a, a robin uh, family last year. And this year, that, uh, that same tree, we had a uh, brown thrasher that nested. Uh, we've actually had uh, flying squirrels, I guess it's a southern flying squirrel, uh, nest or brew or, or uh, just uh, make home out of a, a box that we placed uh, quite high in a tree. Um, and I suppose we have bats nesting here too, for all I know. Uh, we do see them come out uh, just before um, dusk uh, every night and they'll be in this open canopy flying around or out just before eight o'clock this time of year. Um, the yard supports possum, raccoon. Uh, several years ago we saw a raccoon well over 100 feet in a large uh, crotch of a poplar tree. And a titmouse was on his back every now and then pulling out, I understand pulling out uh, kind of the downy uh, uh, or whatever type of uh, fur that the, uh, that the raccoon had and for its nest building purposes. And we have chickadees nesting in boxes, so just a lot of activity here. We do have a lot of, uh, we got viburnum now, box elder is getting up there a ways, uh, black cherry, uh, Carolina silver bell is over here. Uh, the sassafras was a rescue from over towards Snellville. Uh, so we have added uh, a lot of those. We've got the American beach, which hopefully won't be a mid-story all its life. Uh, and Carolina allspice right here, and just a, a lot of, uh, of mid-story. We've got pawpaw over there that we uh, traversed earlier. and. Uh, so we do, we do have our share of mid-story trees today. We generally use black oil sunflower seed. It, uh, it's probably the, the most popular with most of the birds that we have here. Um, there's not a lot of waste from uh, other seeds, uh, millet and, and such as that, that may just toss out of, the, out of the feeder. So we use black oil sunflower seed. Um, we have suet cakes in various locations. In the winter time, we'll put up a, a thistle uh, feeders, uh, the, the Niger thistle feed and the, the goldfinch, American goldfinch like that and when there's an eruption that includes pine siskin, they love it as well. We have had some uh, real good eruptions of, of pine siskin, uh, as many as a couple of hundred at one time uh, several years back. But, uh, and I must say a couple years ago we, we hosted a common red pole which uh, made news. Uh, almost nationally, I guess, maybe the fewer than 10 sightings ever in Georgia. So that was, uh, that was quite something. Um, we do have a lot of nut and droop and seed and uh, fruit bearing uh, plants all over, a lot of viburnum. Viburnum, uh, we have probably about five varieties of viburnum and the birds do love those, uh, those berries. Uh, we've got black cherry that they love. Uh, one other plant that they uh, they really like is the uh, is the beautyberry, American beautyberry, Calicarpa americana. We have uh, several of those in the yard. Um, alternate leaf dogwood. Uh, they love the uh, the berries from the from the alternate leaf dogwood and the Florida dogwood. They love those as well. The the maintenance really is a lot to do with uh, removing invasive species that pop up in, in the yard and. Uh, and some of those are English ivy. Um, Nandina pops up every now and then. Mahonia, leatherback Mahonia will pop up. Uh, privet will, will do that. And even plants that we, we like will come up in the, in the yard. We have uh, bloodroot coming up in the, in the path, rather, and uh, even trillium coming up in the path. So we just uh, we move those and, and that type of thing. 
Yes, we see them on the property. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, there's no difference between a feral cat and a, a nice little kitty kitty a tabby. If it's outdoors, it, it doesn't belong, in my opinion. Sandy's opinion as well. Um, they, uh, they obviously kill many, many birds, uh, defenseless birds, towhees and, and uh, mockingbirds and thrashers and thrushes. And, and I just, uh, <laughs> um, so, but today, I, I would say, uh, start small, uh, establish paths for, for just for uh, just the ease of being able to uh, to maneuver the yard, um, and plant native. I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, plant native, because that is what's going to attract the uh, the birds. Yes, a bird will pick off a, a berry from a privet, but that's not the whole story. Uh, one, one of our idols is, uh, is Doug Tallamy, and he makes it very clear uh, that we need uh, native species of trees to be able to support uh, insects and that type of thing, uh, to be able to support uh, uh, birds who raise their young. A chickadee will, will scout an area out and look for white oak trees, for example, to, to make it real simple. And if they're not there, they're not going to uh, attempt to raise a family because they won't have anything to feed those babies. They can't eat seeds as babies. So native plants, I can't stress enough. Thank you.